What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Good evening, and welcome to the very first live edition of Moving to Michigan. We are excited to have y'all. So this is the inaugural takeoff here. So we're excited to be on. Um, I know that I am a new face, so you all are like, who is this guy? But I'm going to introduce you to the uh, to the people you know best, and uh, we'll get into who I am shortly here. But uh, if this is your first time, we welcome you, and uh, we are excited for what we have in store here. We invite anyone watching to let us know where you're watching from. Um, do us the honor. Um, again, this is our first time coming live to you from the Living in Michigan channel here, and we really want to make sure that we're connecting with our audience. So do us a favor. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or whatever it is, go ahead and let us know where you're watching from in the chats. If you have any questions this evening, do not hesitate to ask them. We love to keep this interactive, not just... Um, well, we're talking at you, y'all, right? That's the intent of going live. So we're excited for um, the discussion this evening. We're going to be talking about all things happening in Michigan here. We're going to get into the big house and the new big screen they got coming their way. We're going to talk about really fun things to do in Ann Arbor, some great things to do in uh, southeastern Michigan in general. We're going to talk about real estate, of course, because that is a hot topic. We're going to talk about the Federal Reserve making everyone's life nice and painful um, and continu continuing with that process today. And if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group along with my co-team lead, Mr. Eric Meldrum. Eric, good evening, sir. What's happening? Thanks, Juan. Yeah, you... welcome, everybody. This is this is awesome. Like We got our first live here, and I'm excited. We got a lot to unpack, as Juan said. So um, most of you know me. I've been on the channel. We started this channel. And for those of you who don't know, Juan is my business partner. You know, So we, we run not only Living in Michigan here, uh, but we also have a channel down in Tampa, called Living in Tampa, Florida. So between the two of us and our team cr spanning across Michigan and Florida, uh, we are on a mission to help everybody move to Michigan and move to Florida that's looking to move to Florida or Michigan. Yeah. So welcome. And I'm not just an honoree in terms of that as well, y'all. Um, I lived in Michigan my entire life up until just about five years ago when I made the jump down to Tampa, Florida. Um, and I was just back home last week. So trust me, I know where all the potholes are. I know exactly where not to turn left because you get tickets. I know where the art van cop hangs out. And trust me, I got that in spades. We can do that all day. Go ahead and test me. Um, we also are joined by the lovely and talented, the, the one and only Miss Sophia Cruz. Good evening, Sophia. Good evening. Hey, everybody. Y'all, Sophia is nervous. Okay. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. A little bit. Yeah. Sophia is nervous. So what I wanted to do is take the moment to break the ice and just let you know, here's how this is going to go. You're going to, you're going to make a mistake. <laughs> it's going to happen. Trust me, especially when we're live, that's the way this works. And you just got to give yourself some grace, but here's what we're also going to do. We're going to deliver a lot of really cool value. And for those of you tuning in um, or watching this later, here's what we want you to know. Um, you can count on us every Wednesday evening at 7 PM Eastern standard time to jump in here and deliver what's happening locally. We're also going to talk about some, some national things, of course, but the goal of this, um, this live and what you should expect to get from this is what is happening in your backyard here in Michigan. So we really want to deliver those things. We're going to try to touch on a few topics and uh, be um, be as brief as we can, but really bring some things maybe you weren't paying attention to or you were unaware of that is happening locally. So that is uh, what you should expect to receive this evening. Um, Sophia, Sophia is in um, what city do you live in, dear? For those of you that don't know, I'm downriver. That's right. Downriver. Downriver is not a city, but it is if you live downriver. We just refer to it as downriver. Welcome to downriver. Um, that could be Lincoln Park. It could be uh, Woodhaven, Brownstown, all those areas. And they'll all argue that that's not downriver. But guess what? Anything south of Dearborn, y'all, that's downriver, just so you know. And then you just get to Monroe. There's really no gap in between. And I know some people are offended right now, but I grew up there. <laughs> I grew up there. I know how that works. Eric is uh, joining us from Brighton this evening, right? Um, Beautiful, Brighton. We're, we're excited for that. But let's get into some of these topics, y'all. Let's talk about some of the things that we want to jam on locally here um, and what is happening here uh, in the local area. And what I'd love to do is go ladies first, of course. Um, ladies first, right? So let's jam into um, some of the topics that you had on deck for us this, this evening, Sophia. What did you want to talk about this morning? What do you want to bring this amazing audience here? <laughs> uh, well, I was going to talk a little bit about uh, just 
fun things to do in Michigan. Um, you know, when you when you move down here, give you an idea of things that you can go and do with the family and friends. Um, so, do you want me to get into that right now? Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about it. So, Sophia wants to talk about the fifteen top rated things to do in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Now, this is going to be an interesting list because. I can tell you, I, there's probably some things on here that I didn't even know. Yeah. Well, Ann Arbor is a very exciting um, city, which is why I really chose that. For, there's just a lot going on there. There's so many things to do. Um, one of them being a U of M game. Everyone wants to visit the big house, I'm sure. Um, I hear that you have to uh, purchase tickets like months in advance. Like they're sold out months in advance. So yep. that's a tip for anyone who wants to uh, visit a game. But um, just in case you can't get into a game, like they do offer tours of the stadium as well and like the locker room. So if you can't get tickets, you could always just do a tour of the stadium itself. Um, and also touring the campus, right? Because it's a beautiful campus. There's like a lot of neo-Gothic architecture there. Um, so that's another thing. And um, Let's see. Well, I love the food scene. Sophia, hold on a second, because we we were on campus um, was like a month ago mm -hmm. and we were we were trying to get some some B roll and some uh, some footage. The episodes live on, on the YouTube channel for all the those who want to go watch it. Um, but what happened that was so hilarious that day? <laughs> Um, a cop came over to approach us because we were uh, flying the drone over campus and they have a, a law where you cannot fly. No fly zone. Yeah, it's a, we were it's a, it's a no fly zone. So anybody looking to, <laughs> to fly their drone on, on a University of Michigan's campus, there's no posted signage. OK, that's the that's the really interesting part. There's no posted yeah. signage that you can't do it. There is just a ordinance and a law apparently on campus that you cannot do it. They have a whole defense system. All right. So not only did we get approached by a police officer, um, on campus police, but they also knew exactly where I was, where the drone took off from, because they have a detection system on campus. Wow. It was absolutely she was telling me about it. I'm like, I had no idea. She's like, yeah, we don't post it anywhere. Um, but unfortunately, that drone's got to come down. I was already coming coming down. I already saw her. It was windy that day, too. So I was like, it was up and then it was down. Um, but yeah, fun fact, if you're looking to fly the drone, stay away from Michigan's uh, campus because they'll probably shoot it down next time. That's their next line of defense. <laughs> and for anyone that has, um, for everyone that has their part 107, um, I'm sure that you already knew that scheduling your flight plan, all of those other things as well. But um, yeah, that is a fun fact. Uh, now, if you've never been to the university of Michigan, y'all like, here's the thing I want you to know is an experience. You know, when you get in that stadium with over a hundred thousand other fans and they are just lit up, it is, it is an experience to behold. Um, and the stadium is incredible. They do a lot of events out of the stadiums. There's runs that, that um, start and finish at the stadium. My brother um, on his wedding day went down and took photos on the field there. I mean, it's just a really cool experience. And if you're from Michigan, this is kind of a rite of passage. Even even if you're a Sparty, not everyone can be saved. So I'm um, just letting you know that ahead of time. Uh, <laughs> we just made mortal enemies on the on the, uh, the the very first day. But like, hey, yeah. this is probably the comments here. University of Michigan or <laughs> state. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. We're, we're going to get that. But listen, y'all, this is it, it's it's an experience. Right. So, Sophia, that's awesome. What else can you do down there? Um, yeah. So again, just touring the campus as well. We touched on that. But the architecture of the campus is just amazing. It's beautiful. So aside yep. from that, things to do with the kids. Right. As you have up on screen, the hands on museum um, has, you know, interactive activities for the kids so it'll keep them nice and happy the whole time that they're there tire them out for you <laughs> yep um and i think they have like a critters uh like a special interactive critters thing that happens like on sundays so cool i've taken the kids there before it's great yep yeah. i've taken the girls there a bunch of times it's great yep. just don't let them run wild they get stimulated with everything but they they love it yep <laughs> And you guys were on the campus. That's great. The botanical yeah. gardens are also beautiful. FYI, if you've never been there, it's a great place to go take photos. So I actually haven't been. Um, I know Eric talked a bit about it when we were doing our um, our video with Ann Arbor. One of the things I liked about it that I learned was that it's dog friendly. So 
you can, you know, take your dogs walking through the botanical gardens and yeah, I haven't visited that yet. So I don't have much to talk about there. I need to, I need to get there. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. The natural museum. This is also a really good spot. Um, again, the whole, um, what's the night at the museum thing. It's got that vibe going on, but like just a really cool place. I, I dig that too. Um, the museum of art is awesome. Uh, Key Town, you got that on there as well. And has have any of you ever been to a show at the State Theater? I have not. I have never been to the Michigan Theater. I've I've been to the Ark a bunch of times to see a bunch of great concerts, but I've never been to the Michigan Theater for anything. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> if you we have, haven't been, we haven't been in the movies in so long, dude. So, so that's a loaded question. <laughs> If you've been to the Michigan Theater before, let us know in the chat because we have not been. Not, none of us have been there before. Presidential Library is in there. Uh, Museum of Archaeology is there as well. This one I think is dope. I was looking at this list earlier, and if you've never taken a trip down the Huron River on kayak, you are missing out. Yeah. Right. It is that is another one of those rite of passages. It is a great experience. Um, you may or may not be able to do a booze cruise from Delhi all the way down to Lower. But, you know, I'm just saying that could you happen. Can do, you can definitely do it. Definitely do it. <laughs> and I don't know. I personally have no experience with that at all. I mean, I mean, if I did, I definitely would not be don't, involved in the alcohol at all. But don't remember it at all. That's I do is, not remember it. That is my top favorite thing to do in Ann Arbor, actually, is the kayaking on the on the Huron River Water Trail. Um, you know, go down to Argo and rent your canoe. They have like the one person, the two person, the paddle boats and everything. People put their, you know, their tubes and they have like their their floating coolers and just you can do the rapids or you can do the calmer waters. But that is the, the funnest thing for me in Ann Arbor. Yeah. And for anyone watching out of area, rapids and the Huron River, uh, this is a different type of rapid we're talking about. <laughs> There, there's disturbances on the water. I wouldn't really call them rapids, but yeah, I, you know, they're, you I'm won't sure fall they're... over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speed bump versus like, uh, you know, hill. <laughs> yeah, it's not like the New River Gorge or you, you know, uh, going through the the Colorado River, the Arkansas, or anything like that. It's nothing like that, but it's definitely a good time. Uh, the Yankee, the Yankee Air Museum out in Nipsey. This is great too. Yep. And uh, Willow Run is where they do the air show every year. For those of you who don't know, we um, out in Michigan, they, they do the Willow, um, the air show every year out in Willow Run. It's a great experience. You can go out there and see um, the angels fly out there sometimes. They don't come every single year, but they come often. And you'll see those old bombers and stuff, too. So this is really cool, Sophia. Um, I love lists like this. And of course, of course, Eric, yeah. talk about the sandwiches here. All right. So if you if you've been to Ann Arbor, you know about Zingerman's. If you haven't been, then you need to know about Zingerman's. And this is why we're bringing it to you because this is a staple right here in uh, Ann Arbor. Um, it's one of the, the, I would say the most highly sought after sandwich in Ann Arbor and one of the most highly regarded businesses in Ann Arbor for two, for two reasons, really. The food is amazing, but we'll talk about the business in a little bit. But if you're going to get one of these sandwiches, the it's probably like this tall. Right, it's like almost as big as my head. So definitely definitely split it with somebody. Yeah. Um, we usually do a, a half a sandwich each, my wife and I. The girls, forget it, like they'll eat scraps off of our sandwich. We don't even need to order them anything <laughs> when, we, when we eat there. Uh, but it, they got everything, pastrami, um, you name it, club sandwiches. I mean, they're fantastic sandwiches. But the interesting thing about Zingerman's is the owners um, are really tied in with the community and they've written a lot of business books. So there is a, bu a business book about Zingerman's, how they run their, their operation. Um, a lot of people who work there love working for the, the company. They have done a fantastic job of just providing a, a great place to work and they've showcased it in, in their books on how they've been able to, even through COVID, maintain employee retention, right? Employee, um, you know, happiness, you know, throughout, throughout the year. And, uh, it shows because you know, every time we come in there, everybody's smiling, everybody's doing a, a great job at what they're doing. It's just, it's one of those places you have to go experience. Absolutely. You, know, you, you gotta go check it out. Absolutely. And it's a great business to support. Everybody talks about support local. Zingerman's is, you know, again, they're, they're one of the gold standards in terms of like, um, you know, 
respect in business and just more, more importantly, they do it well. They do it, it they make you want to come back. You know, obviously they deliver great, uh, great food, but it's just the entire experience. It is a rite of passage <laughs> to go to Ann Arbor and to go to Zingerman's. You just have to do it. Trust us. And if you've if you've had a Zingerman sandwich before, put that in the chat. And also, if you think that there's a better sandwich in Ann Arbor, we'd love to know. That's going to be an argument for sure, but we'd love to know down below um, in the comments. So don't hesitate to reach out there. And uh, I mentioned the Ark. I've been to concerts at the Ark. This is one of the coolest venues. Um, I've been to a lot of concerts, right? Like um, completely blessed with the concerts that I've been to in the state of Michigan. I've been to a lot of different venues. Um you know, even back to Harpo's back in the day when it was still alive. Um, I know it's not there anymore, but I, I've been there, right? So, uh, but the Ark is one of those really unique spots. It's super intimate, right? It's super intimate. If you've ever been there to go see a show, it is a wonderful place, man. My my dad took me there and it's I just have memories of it. But mo more importantly, it's one of those spots where you can come and you're only 30, 40, 50 feet away max from the from the artist, Right. And like, that's rare. You, you know, these today, when you go see these huge mega concerts, like you're in Ford field, <laughs> right. Sounds bouncing off of everything everywhere, but the arc has been designed for, with, with, with audio and music in mind. It's a very intimate, just wonderful setting. So I would definitely encourage you guys to go check that out. Um, the arc is awesome. And then, um, the creature conservancy, has anyone been here? Have you guys been here? I nope. have not. All right. No, we're on a mission. Definitely gonna we're, this we're gonna we're gonna tackle all these. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, this sounds like a this sounds like a challenge. Yeah, well, when, when you look at stuff like this, I'm always intrigued. Let's let's hop over to their website really quick because um, I'm always intrigued with things like this. The people are very anxious about animal and animal rights now, and everybody gets all bent out of shape. But these uh, conservancies are typically things where animals were injured, they were hurt. They're brought into an, uh, you know, a, a zoo type setting or a conservancy like this, and they're nursed back to health with the ultimate goal of getting them back in the wild. That doesn't always happen, right? That doesn't always happen. So when you look at things like this, that these are great opportunities. Being in, here in Tampa now, the Clearwater Aquarium is one of those for us where, you know, they bring in hurt sea turtles and they, they put those things back. Um, they nurse them back to health with the goal of getting them back out on, on the Gulf of Mexico, which is great. So I love seeing stuff like this. And if you can go and support, they make their money right by, and, um, they're able to fund these, um, these situations by our tickets, right. And, do, and donations a lot of the time. So these are things that are really cool. I love stuff like this. I don't know that I'm petting, um, wolves or coyotes, but Hey, <laughs> <laughs> go do your thing man like for the person is, last time for everything that's right but <laughs> summer camp for the kids uh you know i love stuff like this so we're always looking for things like this locally in our area to plug our family into fun things we can do with the family or just to keep the kids occupied because there's only so many screens or tablets you can put them in front of before they start losing their minds too mm -hmm. all right so i love stuff like this thanks sophia what else did you have i know you had some other stuff on deck for us too uh, yeah, our, our Metro parks, I definitely want to get into those. Um, you know, cause we have some of the most beautiful Metro parks, um, you know, bike riding, the trails, the, you can canoe and kayak in most of the parks as well. Um, there's a lot of, uh, how do I want to say bodies of water here and in our parks too. So if you want to yep. bring up that list, yeah. So let's talk about this list. we got Dodge park is number one here out in Sterling Heights. Mm-hmm. So I haven't been there in quite a bit, but I did catch an REO Speedwagon concert there once. Uh, it was <laughs> it was great, I, and I love that band. So I had a lot of fun there. Um, and they and they throw like a carnival every year there as well. Um, so that's something to take the kids to. A lot of fun. They have live music stuff like that. Have you guys ever been there? I have not been to a show at Dodge Park. How big is the concert venue there? No, it's it's outside. It's kind of just like a little dome. Uh, type of stage outside yeah okay they got a splash pad there too that's what's up <laughs> that i didn't know and here's the uh concert venue that you're speaking of yeah that's cool so it's probably a couple thousand people there if the, the lawn's packed out yeah that concert was pretty packed out <laughs> <laughs> reo speedwagon leading the way still 40 years later that's fantastic yeah. that's great <laughs> What else? You got Dodge Park. Yeah, uh, of course, Bill Io. I mean that that that's my favorite, of course, right? You have the aquarium there, um, the conservatory. 
That is beautiful. I mean, I, I don't know if I wish we had pictures of that to show up. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it has like a glass dome at the top. That's like spectacular. Um, and then, of course, you know, there you can also rent kayaks, um, barbecue with the family. They have um, I can't think of the name right now, but they have like the the Pontiac, the race cars. You know how they they bring in the tracks and they the do Grand the race. Grand Prix. Grand Prix. There we go. That's what I'm thinking yep. of. Um, yeah, I uh, I was visiting the city one day and there was a sound you could hear. It sounded like bees. I'm like, what is that sound? Like, it just sounded like a big swarm of bees. Well, we figured out it was the Grand Prix and it was coming from Belayo. And we were so far from Belayo that I couldn't believe we could hear that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's so that's always fun to do there as well. Um, a quick no quick note. I love this that we're now that we're talking about this, right? Like our, our beautiful metro parks, but something to take note of because most people don't know this. So I, I want to take a, a brief moment to to help people understand Detroit, Michigan is farther north than Canada. Right? All right. I know everybody's like, what are you talking about? Windsor, Ontario is south of Detroit, Michigan. Most people think Canada, they think north, but guess what? That's not the case. Right. So I, I want to make a point to point this out because I tell you what, you just don't know these things. This is Windsor, Ontario. This is Canada mm -hmm. right here. This is Detroit, Michigan. As you can see, it is north <laughs> of Windsor. Yeah. So like that's a good I, I, I just one of those things because people you don't know what you don't know. When you look at geography, I'm going to take a map out here a little uh, just quick. In Toronto, if you were to draw a line across Toronto here, let's clear this out really quick. Um if you were to draw a line, it's basically in mid Michigan, yeah. right? Like, and a majority of people who live in Canada <laughs> live in that line and below, you know, which is fascinating when you think about that. So just a little yeah. geography lesson for those of you that don't know, right? When we start talking about the upper peninsula of Michigan, that is way up North y'all. That is why it's cold up there. Okay, so keep that in perspective as uh, you kind of roll through it. But Belle Isle, I think, is one of those absolute gems. And this is bring up the photos that um, Sophia was talking about. This is a great park to go hang out, spend the day, exactly what she was saying. There's some great stuff to do yeah. here. I think that's a well, great for swimming there, too. Like, it has a little swimming area. Yeah. Um, I'd always say, like uh, safety when you're when you're swimming there, though, because the currents in the in the river there um can get pretty strong but because you can jet ski on those waters as well so there's a lot of boating and jet skiing so um yeah but you can you can take the kids to swim there as well I yeah get the beach all the good not, stuff not let them swim too far out <laughs> exactly what other parks you want to circle in on yeah um I was oh uh, Kensington Kensington Metro Park, which I'm um, you know I'm sure Eric has some some uh, input on that park. He's closest to that to that Metro Park. Um, that's my my favorite place to go like on holidays to swim and, and barbecue with the family. So that's our top choice when we want to go. Just hang like feel like you're just hanging out at the beach for the day. Yep. Yeah. Kensington's great. Um, for those of you who have never been there, it is right um, north of I ninety six. Beautiful park. Uh, they do a really nice job. There's a great um, trail where you can run and rollerblade and bike and do all the things there. Um, it goes all the way all the way around the park. It does have a um, a giant slide and and a uh, great beach out there. You can fish, um, take boats out there on the on the lake itself. Um, just really nice area, and it's just north of New Hudson, that South Lion area there. So just for perspective for you guys, Eric, what do you guys like to do when you go out to Kensington? Yeah, well, the girls have been asking us to ride horses. Um, we're not ready for that just yet because <laughs> that can get pretty expensive as a sport there. Um, but they so they do have trails in there that you can take horses on. Um, like Juan said, there's water park. Um, we we just went there uh, not too long ago and really just, you know, kind of hung out, enjoyed the nature. You know, there was there's some playscapes for the kids, um, pavilions, picnic tables. So you can go in, you know, if you want to rent a pavilion. Um, to have, you know, birthday party or just an event um, that's available as well. So whether you're throwing, throwing events or um, they also have camps there, you know, in the summer, um, I know they hold a lot of uh, kids camps uh, where they're doing arts and crafts. They'll do kind of nature things. Um, a lot of boy scouts and girl scouts uh, really enjoy Kensington because that's where they go 
earn their badges, you know, because they have all the trails, they have all the the structures where they can, you know, go into the water, um, you know, save somebody and, and kind of, you know, role play that way. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of things to do. But, you know, our favorite thing to do is just really go on walks in Kensington. Um, the the slide was a little bit too big for the girls uh, a few years ago. They're just starting getting to that point where I think they can go on on their own or I don't have to go up every single time um, with them. So uh, we'll next year that will be our, our goal is to get Mila you know, on the slide on her own. Yeah, beautiful nature out there. And they do have the tot lots and in, in those types of activities as well. Again, the walking trails are great. Get some video here of it. Um, and it's one of those really cool places to go when the leaves start to turn. Um, I really, really think that it's a it's a great part. We spent a lot of time there um, when we lived in Michigan as well. So and we tend to go back whenever we get an opportunity. So I think that's great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Those are great, Sophia. Thank you for, for bringing those to the table. We appreciate that. You got um, it. Yeah, and there, there are many more, y'all. So for those of you that are watching, we'll put the links to the um, to all of these uh, resources that we use down in the description below on YouTube if you're watching it there. Um, if you are watching over there, do us a favor, smash that little like button. It lets people know that there's you're getting value out of this. And if you have not taken the time to subscribe, please make sure you do that. Um, this team right here has been putting in a lot of work to bring you these great videos to help um, help you better understand what you know what Michigan has to offer, um, especially the, uh, the Brighton Ann Arbor area specifically. So they're there. All of uh, the contact information is down below too. So if you have any questions specifically, don't hesitate to reach out there uh, as well. So I think it's some great stuff. Uh, we did talk about the big house earlier, Eric. I know that, um, you know, you've got some news about the big house as well. So like, let's, let's talk yeah, about that. I want to I wanna talk about some current events, but before we, we jump into the big house, I did like, this is a question we get a lot, you know, and um, when you're moving to to Michigan, you really have two major major areas like Metro Detroit, and then you have um, west of Metro Detroit, which is like the Ann Arbor, Brighton area, Howell. And a big question that comes up a lot is like, what's the draw, right? What's wh if we're not in Metro Detroit, what's what's the draw over to in the Ann Arbor area? And if you go back to that list of the 15 things to do, and it really kind of sums up, I, I think the Ann Arbor area is there's so much. Uh, artistic museums, the university, right? A lot of culture, a lot of history. Um, and then the, the nature, right? Everything was a museum or nature, right? So if you like being outdoors, you like doing, um, you know, outdoor activities, running, jogging, uh, biking, you know, hiking, um, there's tons of trails, there's tons of Metro parks, there's tons of, tons of things to do to go just be in nature, right? Kayaking down, canoeing down the Huron river and, you know, just kind of exploring, those are all great things. Now, Metro Detroit also has a ton of that, right? Stony Metro Park and going to Rochester, um, go over to Belle Isle. There's there's a ton more. But just in this like Ann Arbor, kind of Washtenaw, Livingston County area, there is a density of, of Metro Parks you know, right surrounding. And you can see that from the map, right? You look at Detroit, it's all gray, right? Because that's <laughs> the suburbs, right? There's, there, is no, there is no nature there. Um, it's scattered throughout. But then as you start getting out of it, there's a ton of greenery, right? And it's surrounding Ann Arbor and they call Ann Arbor tree town for a reason. There's, there's tons of trees, tons of greenery all around. So I just wanted to give that perspective before we, we moved on to some current events, because that's a question that comes up quite often, you know, is yeah. like, I'm thinking about moving to Michigan and I, I, I'm, I have a job in Ann Arbor, but I don't know how far outside of Ann Arbor is too far, yeah. right? What, what is there to do with different lifestyles? So um, if you have questions about that, you know, obviously drop those down below or reach out to us. Be happy to answer those. Yeah, we'll get one of these uh, these Wednesdays. We'll have to get really deep in geography just to kind of talk through, you know, the how do these live? And I think Eric's given a great perspective on this. There's so many lakes as you guys, you know, if you're looking at this map and you're looking and you've never been in the area here before. I mean, look at the amount of blue that, that runs across here and this chain of lakes going from Kensington all the way down through uh, the picnic recreation area, like all of these waterways tie into each other. Right. And ultimately they all run out to the Detroit <laughs> river and, and uh, Lake Erie, which is fascinating. You can canoe from the, the chain of lakes all the way down to Detroit river. Now it's an event. You're going to have to pull the canoe out of the water at some point to make it work, but you can do it. It's crazy when you think about that. 
right? Um, they're all tied together that way. So I just wanted to, I did want to point that out because Eric's, Eric's spot on with that. You know, you look at the West Bloomfield area, Wixom, Milford, Waterford Township, and it just continues forever. So um, there's a lot of opportunity. Eric grew up on, on the, um, the east side of Michigan, you know, and then became a West Sider. Uh, shout out to my West Side, my people, um, you know, and, and you just go through it. My mom lives out in Pinckney. Um, loves it out there. It's been out there since 1999. We moved from uh, down river, you know, it, over to Canton. I grew, I, I graduated from from Plymouth Canton. Went to Taylor schools my entire career till my senior year. Graduated Plymouth Canton, and then she moved out to Pinckney, and she loves it out there. Right, right next to the U of M Wildlife Preserve, backs up to 2,600 acres of state land. It's gorgeous, y'all. Michigan is unreal. <laughs> At specific times of year, it's unbelievable. So I think that's a great point. Cool. Eric, what did you have popping? Um, you mentioned the big house. Let's let's get into that for sure. Yeah. So th this is big news. I mean, if you're a University of Michigan football fan like Wolverines, this is this is huge news. And, you know, Sophia talked about it earlier. One of the, the major attractions, like if you're looking for something to do, um, you got to go to the big house. And it's first off, it's an experience. Right. The, the stadium holds over 110,000 people like it's in, it's insane. How many people can can fit into one stadium? Um, that alone is magnificent. Like that was the major attraction. If anybody's you know in awe of of that big of a stadium, like you just got to go stand in the in there and just take it all in. Now there's a picture of it. Like that is a sea of people, <laughs> right? and, it can be, and it can be heard so far away oh, yeah. from the stadium. Like yeah. when there's a game on, I, yeah, I was showing a house once and I could, ju we could just hear the cheering coming from that stadium. It's, it's incredible, which brings so, so many people to that area. You know, if you're coming into, into town on game day, um, just stay away from the South side of, of Ann Arbor. Yeah. Um, you're going to want to go around to the North. If you're trying to get downtown, just go around to the North because, you know, it's like a hub and spoke in there, but you know, that alone is an, a great thing to go go experience for the first time. Um, so if you've been in the big house, you know what a jaw dropping experience it is, but it is about to get even, even more jaw dropping. So this is going on a grander scale. Um, they're redoing the scoreboards on both end of, of the end zones and they're changing out the lighting. So now in addition to having bigger scoreboards on both ends, the lights in the stadium are going to be synced to the scoreboard, giving this like whole entire, um, ex like visual experience throughout the game so you can imagine um, when the leds on the scoreboards go up and they're they're showing a replay or something and there's music behind it there's going to be the lights that are flashing along with it yeah i don't right. know what it's going to look like yet i haven't seen any um you know renderings or or vr of like you know, not virtual experience but like renderings of, of what it's going to look like but you can just imagine in that big of a stadium all those lights flashing the people the crowd the noise that's going to be something like that's going to be something to to go experience when i read this i immediately thought like you know how they put the led lighting behind the televisions now mm -hmm. and it responds to whatever you're watching right like that's what i had in mind too also you're probably gonna get a warning on your ticket now that if you're sensitive to light <laughs> <laughs> that it's going to uh, just be mindful of that when you come to the stadium. But yeah, it is an event when you see that sea of yellow and it's just like, oh man, there's something to be said about Michigan football. It's unbelievable. Um, and if I sound like a slappy, it's because I am one, two, three, shout out to uh, university of Michigan. Uh, yeah. I, my very first football experience ever was at the big house. I was like probably six years old. My dad, put me on his shoulders. I remember walking through downtown Ann Arbor and all the people and just how excited it was. And everybody was doing something and we had a tailgate. And, you know, I remember be bits and pieces being that young, but then going into the big house. And then that was back in the days when they would take a football that came into the stands and they would throw it, keep throwing it up until it went over the top of the stadium. Right. Like, and I remember that. And I remember using his goggles because we were up in like way up in no man's land looking down. Right. And like on the field and, um, we were listening to the radio at the same time that the the stadium's there and then the stadium would erupt first and then the radio broadcast would come up. And if I sound nostalgic about it, it's because I am. And that, that experience for me, 
um, was one of the most captivating things as a young man. It just really gave me this, this just desire to want to experience that more and more. And obviously from that day on, I was a huge Michigan fan. So, um, just one of those things, if you ever get a chance to go, go, I took my wife for the very first time they played Iowa that year. We won. It was, there was, it was snowing. Um, it was just, man, what a really cool experience. So go, go, if you can go, go, it's unbelievable. You were, you were spoiled from day one getting introduced to football <laughs> yeah then i lived in detroit for my entire life and the lions are terrible so yeah, that everyone when you, else when you, to, when you go to a game it's like you know when you experience that for the first time and then uh compare that to like did you ever go to the joe Louis arena oh yes hockey oh. right that, that oh, thing yeah. only held, held like twenty five thousand people it was like a quarter of it yes. you know it's this little rinky dink ice rink compared to to that stadium yeah, no, absolutely. Eric, I'm old enough to remember when the pizza man used to give away cars to get people to come to the to the Red Wings games. That's how old I am. FYI. All right. So for those of you watching this, you're like, what are you talking about? Yes. The Illich family used to have to give away cars to get people to come to the Red Wings games because no one watched hockey back then. <laughs> Fat, fascinating to think about that. That's a whole nother conversation. We're not talking about that. Today. <laughs> yeah. they, got, they, they got pizza, you know, giving away pizza too. They got pizza literally, literally legitimately. Cool. So this is great. I'm looking forward to this. I can't wait to see what that looks like. It's going to be, yeah, awesome. that's going to be, that's going to be super dope. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. What else you got working? Speaking um, of other current events. I mean, if you're, if you're in the Brighton area, um, you know, the, there's a big streetscape project going on. Um, so a lot of cities are going through this right now and it, it's, it's really crazy to think about, um, Brighton, which, you know, they started developing the downtown area, um, over a century ago. Wow. So that is how old some of the infrastructure here is. And, and a lot of cities, you know, that are like this, um, they're coming due too, right? So this is not going to be the only, only city that has this happen, but, uh, the water mains in downtown Brighton were over a hundred years old. Jeez. So that, that's crazy to think about, like 100 years old. Guess what these things were made out of? Uh, the water mains? Yep. Well, they're, 100 years ago, they were going to be uh, clay. No. No? That was a good, good guess. I, I would have guessed that too. Cast iron? Nope. What? You're not even leaving me hanging. They, they were wooden. <laughs> I, I don't even know how that's even possible. Wow. They were still working? Uh, the water <laughs> main yeah the water main wow yeah okay so yeah. they they needed to be replaced so that would that would have been a cool project right like in itself to replace the the uh the water main and you know upgrade that system it needs to be done um but in addition to that they took that opportunity and said okay if we're going to do this let's revamp the downtown area yeah now this this project started back in early 2023. Um, it was a year long project that they kicked off. The old city manager, um, you know, this was his last hurrah, you know, here in Brighton. So he kicked this off, and the project is actually redoing the street, redoing the water mains. But they're going to narrow the the street, expand the sidewalk, uh, make it more handicap accessible, make it more um, walkable. Right. For you to enjoy, you know, eating on the sidewalk because a lot of restaurants and businesses down there have a little sidewalk um, right in front or a little patio area where they'll put some chairs, tables. Um, they just want it to be more of a, a, a quaint down word quaint has always been there, but they want yeah. to make it more enjoyable, you know, for for downtown. And then in addition to that, you know, Brighton has a mill pond um, with the Imagination Station and then they have. Um, the amphitheater down there. So they have concerts. So this is all going to be more congruent, more connected. Um, if you've ever been, you know, here's a good example of it, the mill pond overlooking it. And that's where the con concert um, amphitheater is. So they're going to make that more connected with Main Street as before there was this like weird transition as you went in um, to the mill pond. There was this, you know, kind of like dirt hill that you kind of walked down and it was, wasn't really, um, that appealing people tripped on it all the time people there was tree roots in it um so it just needed to be be updated so you know really exciting um this is gonna phase one is gonna complete hopefully in the next um you know 14 to 21 days they they anticipate phase one um they started pouring concrete and this is the big the big topic you know in brighton is when is main street going to be opened they're not going to finish everything with the planners and and all the the new architect they have you know built out for the mill pond but 
everyone wants to know when Main Street is going to be open because this has been a pretty detrimental uh, project to businesses that yep. re- rely on a lot of foot traffic, you know, downtown. Um, so a couple of businesses have already closed. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, um, we don't want to see that happen. So, you know, th- it's a, it's a big project. It's exciting, but it's also scary for a lot of people at the same time, because, you know, there's a lot of things happening that, um, are outside of people's control, right? You just, you can't get people downtown if there's no sidewalks and, you know, there's nowhere to walk and nowhere to go. And, um, so, you know, the positive spin out of this is it's almost done. And we're, we're going to get a revamp in the downtown area. It's going to be beautiful at the end of the day. Um, everybody's just really excited to see that end come sooner or later. Yeah, I think it's great. And this is a great resource here, y'all. We'll, again, we'll link this down below in the description so you guys can read through this because I think it's great. It's got the timeline, all the projections. I, it, again, anybody that's entered, any, ever done any construction at all, you know that those timelines are basically um, suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> the barring incident, barring perfection, right? So just keep that in mind. But they are doing a good job. Just FYI, they're getting through that pretty quick. But I just, I just wanted to share this with you. I think this is a, this is a great share. So you can go to City of Brighton, um, and you'll find it right there. But we'll put it in the description for y'all. Yep. Perfect. And then um, last but not least, with U of M, Eric, since you're on that hot topic, um, you had something else in here talking about. This yeah, this is like the Ann, Ann Arbor, uh, Ann Arbor day. So, you know, we, we focus a lot on the Ann Arbor market, you know, one of the, one of the gems and you can see university of, of uh, Michigan in the background and then the big house right there, but they also have a golf course. All right. And for um, my, the entire time we've lived in Ann Arbor and, and the outskirts, I've never played this golf course until recently. And I always thought that you had to be a member to go play this course. And fun fact, you do not need to be a member. It is a public course. I just never looked at the website. I just literally never looked. So uh, I got invited to a a charity outing and a great organization too, by the way, I give a shout out to our our friends over at VetLife. Um, They do a lot of great things for for veterans um, to help find their benefits and make sure they know and they're aware of of the benefits that they do have. Uh, My friend, Josh Parrish, and his wife, Courtney, um, you know, run that organization and do a lot of great things. So if you're a veteran watching this and you need assistance, um, you know, definitely reach out. We can get you in touch and make sure you get that information. Um, but they had this, their golf outing to raise money for, uh, for the organization. And they had it at the university of Michigan's golf course and pulling up to this golf course. I I would have thought I was at a country club. No joke. Like I'm, I pull in, and there is a, a wall of people and this is all staff, right? And they're ready to take your bag. They're ready to, uh, you know, park your car. I'm like, I don't even know what's happening. I'm like, there's so many people around me right now trying to take everything from me. Like I thought I was being robbed, but they were just trying to help. <laughs> you know? Very, very friendly staff. So my car did not get stolen, by the way. Um, but they, they parked it. They grabbed my bag. They put it on. It was just a really great experience. Um, but the course itself was absolutely amazing. Um, we played a scramble. Uh, we shot seven under. Not that it matters. We were there for a great ch- charity outing. But hey, I'm competitive. I would have loved to win that that outing. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised with the difficulty of the course. There was there was one hole, I uh, believe it was number 14 or 15. And we got about 200 and, 280 yards out. Um, and then the, the green just takes a complete dog leg left and for those of you who don't know what a dog leg is in golf it is when the the course turns slightly and you can't see uh where that's going how a dog leg is is shaped kind of like this like hockey sticks like a hockey stick there you yeah. go better better example um well this was like a 90 degree dog leg and I, I remember the one of the guys who was cruising around he worked at the the golf course and he was cruising around checking on people which was awesome they had waters and gatorades just making sure everyone stay hydrated uh, it was a really hot day. And uh, we said, hey, I, we can't see the green. Where is it? And he goes, oh, man, this is a this is a real tough hole. And use some language I'm not going to use on here. He said, this is a, <laughs> uh, this is a B-I-T-C-H <laughs> hole. But, oh, yeah. you know, uh, we're like, oh, OK, like that explains it. Like, where the heck is the green? He's like, all right, so you're going to look. You see that little flag kind of off to the left there. And it was still about 200 yards out. So this is a par four. I think it was a par four. 
I'm like, there's no way anybody's getting there in two. He goes, yeah. I think it's yeah. this hole right here. I think this is the one you're talking about. It yeah, I, I think it is. That, and then the greens are over here. Yep. Big pine trees there. Yep. That's yep. the one you can, you literally cannot see around those. Can't even see the green. You have to be like so far towards the other tree line there for you to even see the green. Absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah. I think that's but, that hole. Yeah, it was it was a great track. I, I loved it. I really enjoyed it. And that's one of those courses now that uh, now that I know it's public, I can pick up nine holes and just go go in the morning, go in the afternoon. And it's right there, you know, in Ann Arbor. So really cool. Um, if you're into golf, you know, you got a, tons of golf courses in addition to University of Michigan, you know, um, in the area. Great golf, you know, in Metro Detroit and the Ann Arbor, Livingston County area. Um, really great golf courses. Yeah. And real quick on, uh, greens fees. So there is some preferential treatment given to students, faculty, alumni, those types of things. So just heads up. Um, but it, guest or affiliated golfer, <laughs> uh, guest of students, you can see that an unaffiliated guest, which I'm assuming is the public. Um, anyone that is not affiliated with the, um, with the university in some way, shape or form, what is, what it says here is that a one day packages are available for unaffiliated guests that include greens fees, your cart, um, a welcome gift and a food voucher, which is pretty cool. $135 Monday through Friday and $160 Friday through Sunday. So just a heads up on that for anybody wondering what it's like to go out and golf um, on the University, University of Michigan's grounds there. Again, the stadium's right across the street. You're right downtown. Great experience, great area. It's cool. And you park there during football games, FYI. So yep. get, get comfy with that. That's where you guys will be on that. End. Lots, lots of tailgating on that golf lots course. Lots of tailgating, my man, for sure. What else? What else is going on, Eric? Nothing, man. What's let's, let's talk about the real estate market because I think that's a major oh. question that's going around right now. Real estate is, you know, should we buy? Should we sell? Like, there's a lot to consider um, in this conversation too. So let's let's unpack a little bit what's going on in the market. Well, for those of you who um, didn't know. Today, the Federal Reserve did announce, and um, I, why do you, would you just ask me about housing? And I'm making a shift to Federal Reserve, but it's very important. To very understand. tied together. We're going. Yeah, they are. Um, yes, they're specifically. Um, and I got We were hoping for better news. I think everybody kind of expected the Federal Reserve um, was going to raise interest rates one quarter of one point. Uh, raising the the key Fed rate to roughly five and a half percent. We'll get into some of the, those details here in a second. Um, the the Fed fund rate is um, it is painful, y'all. And what what does that mean? So if you're watching this, you're like, who cares? Well, I'm the Federal Reserve. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Um, but if you borrow money, which ninety nine point nine percent of people do, uh, it matters, right? And why why does that matter? Well, because the Fed fund rate is what banks borrow money from overnight from the Federal Reserve and with each other. And if the banks are paying more for their money that they loan us, y'all, what is it? What do you think that that means for us, for us common folk? Mm -hmm. We're going to pay more money for our money too, yes. right? Our interest rates are going to be higher. So the reason I wanted to start with that is because it is noteworthy and it's important to take note that that has happened. Um, the Federal Reserve did nothing when they met last month. We we um, we talked about buying the pause. We brought that up to you know our clients and our audience because it you know we knew that there would be a break there, um, and now the Federal Reserve has decided to start r raising rates again. So much so that they have not been this high in more than twenty two years, which is fascinating when you think about that. But here we are. OK, we're living in this world in real time and we got to take note of it. And the thing that I want to really uh, make a note about this when I talk about, you know, why this is important to anyone who's considering buying or selling real estate right now. Um, again, if you're buying a car, it matters. Right. Interest rates are going to be higher on buying a car. And if you all haven't looked at what it costs to buy a car right now, buckle up. Right. Because we're in the process. Eric, I was just sharing this with Eric. Um, the same vehicle that we drive now to release that same vehicle is double the payment. Who, good Lord. Mm -hmm. Double. So yeah, if you don't get a car. If you don't get a car guy, you better yeah. get a car guy. You better get it a works, car guy. Work some magic. Yeah. And we have car guys and we have the A plan or the option because my grandmother worked at GM. Like y'all, we get these discounts and it's still twice as much. So I'm bringing this up because it's important to know. All right. Now, what is, what does this mean? 
here's the here's the problem. Here's the thing that that is um, that is a challenge right now. We talk about the the Fed raising rates. The Federal Reserve, the 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 core inflation rate, which is one of the things they're looking at. They look at unemployment rates, those types of things too. He came out. If you go watch his press conference today and his Q and A, he came out today and he said that employment. Is, is a bit of a challenge right now, meaning that we're overemployed. He won't come out and say that, but that's what he's saying if you look at it, right? Uh, um, the unemployment rate is at 3.6%. He needs that to be higher, right? They need to put people out of work, which is crazy. And it makes me so mad when I say that out loud. But when you look at the core inflation, the thing that is making inflation high is grocery. It's all the stuff that you and I actually buy, not the all the other crap that they measure that doesn't matter to us. Right. It's energy, food and housing. And one of the things that is, is so frustrating about this process is they had to raise interest rates is what they said to cool the economy. Right. You raise interest rates, you stop people from buying because money gets expensive to borrow. Banks don't want to loan it as much that more risk is involved when you start loaning people money at higher interest rates. There's a lot of factors that go into this, but it's important to, to take note of this because Housing is one of the things that he came out and said today that is persistently, right? The inf inflation is persistently sticky is what he was saying. Well, the irony of that is housing is so expensive now, right? Mortgage rates have more than um, doubled over the last 15 months because of the interest rates going up. But here they are putting more interest rates on with the goal of they really want to stop housing, right? Right. And uh, again, this is an opinion piece right now, but I, I want you to understand how, how this works. Real estate values are up. And if you're out there shopping for homes right now, you know how competitive this market is. Raising the interest rates did not stop in values from increasing. What it did is it stopped sellers from bringing their properties to the market because they didn't want to let, it, let go of their 2.75% or 3% interest rates to go get a new home at 7%. So you're in this really weird paradox of you need housing prices to come down to, to make them more affordable, to help cool inflation, but you're raising interest rates in, in the hopes of stopping the market and driving prices down. So you're in this really weird limbo land because people still need to, to, to buy and sell. They need to move every day. That doesn't change, right? But what it does is makes it really painful for those that are, that are, are buying at those new rates or selling a 3% a mortgage and then moving into them. So I wanted to bring this up because it's important to note before we get into the actual numbers and what's happening out there. All right, yeah, now let's before, talk. Before you jump over one, like one of the things that you know we hear on a regular basis is, hey, you know, when we bought a house, interest rates were 16%. Yep. No big deal, right? What what's the difference between then and now? Oh, I wish I had more charts to show you guys on this. But here here's the short answer. Um, in the 80s, when that was occurring, you could buy a home on one income and that one income could purchase a home with roughly one um, uh, anywhere from one fifth to one third of the annual salary would buy the median single family home then. On one income, as a matter of fact, it wasn't even legal you weren't even allowed to use two incomes until the Reagan administration changed that. And I think around, around 84. So forgive me if that stat's not perfect, but it's somewhere yeah. around that timeline. And the the and average cost of a home back then was around $50,000 $50, and a 20% down payment would be 10, 10K. 10K, right? right. The, now, the average income back then was right around 30,000 30 a year. Yep. So again, do the math. You could buy a home on less than one quarter of your annual income, right? And put $10,000 $10, down and get in there. Today, what is the um, the median income right now, Eric? 70, uh, 70, med median is just over like 70. 70,000. That's the household I mean, or individual? Because we're household, talking individual. Right, household. When you, yep. when you, look, at a, when you look, look at a much broader um, viewpoint of that, it's, it's probably right around like 50K. 50K. Right. It, I, the, the individual's got to be just over 50. It's probably mid 50s or even close to 60 now for individual yep. income. Y'all, it's only gone up $20,000 since the 80s. But what has not gone up $20,000 is the houses. And, and, and we're going to show that right now. Right. So I want to show you what the median family, um, the median single family, let's get out of condos. 
The median single family home in the United States right now cost $446,000 essentially. That's the median. That's not the average, y'all. We all know the median and average are two different things, right? Uh, and I'm not going to give a whole lesson on that today, but the impo important thing to note is if, <laughs> if the uh, average salary is $55,000 for one person, but the average home costs $450,000 because approximately that's what it is, right? Again, you can see the discrepancy. So borrowing money, borrowing money uh, at 18% on a $50,000 asset is entirely different than buying money um, for a $450,000 asset. The median down or the down payment required to buy something like this, right, is significantly different. We can break those numbers down even further. Eric, we'll do that in another live. I, I would love to go deep with y'all on this, but I do want to give perspective. He asked a great question it costs roughly seven times the amount to buy this, to buy the same type of home. Okay. That is, that's the big thing to note here before you could do it on less than a quarter of your income today it is sucking up a majority of your income to try to accomplish that. That's why there's all this pain and fight back and this arguments between boomers and millennials. And, and y'all at the end of the day, it's what we got to deal with the, the, not the point to, to, to say one person is right or wrong, but just understand the difference. Eric asked the question, why is it so much different? Well, it requires way more income and today's money is worth way less. At the end of the day, if you have to simplify it, that's really what it means. Okay. These mortgage numbers are outrageous. Eric, let's run a quick mortgage calculation now that you said that. So um, just real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Pull that up. And you know, this is, this is just perspective, you know, like the, information is coming left fast and furious from from news outlets from you know every which way saying hey there's doom and gloom there's going to be a crash there's going to be all this stuff happening and really you know we're we're living and breathing this every single day so the reality is 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 the perspective on this um is a little bit different than what's being portrayed you know in the news and there's some reasons why like you would think normal supply and demand interest rates goes up home prices come down, right? That's what we were taught in economics, right? Supply versus demand. These things are directly correlated. Well, there's a lot of other factors that are at play here outside of that. Supply is very low. There's a looming uh, Fed push on the interest rates to keep those high, which has caused a bunch of people not to sell homes. And it's squeezing the inventory. And builders since 2008 basically said, hey, I'm never going to get in this position again. So they don't build enough houses, right? They're hedging their bets, making sure that they always sell out of homes and they're not going out and building uh, these mass developments like they used to back in the, the 90s and early 2000s. That stuff's not happening, right? Mm -hmm. So existing home sales are down, new construction's down, big shortage of supply, plus homeowners are, are not selling because they don't want to transition into a higher interest rate. But here's the thing to note, right, is when everyone is saying, look left, look what's happening on the right, yeah. right? And you may not even know this, but there's companies out there and large institutional investors um, like BlackRock Capital, Jeff Bezos' company who owns, who owns Amazon, and a bunch of other, you know, smaller guys that are buying single family homes. So what do they know that we don't, yeah. right? And, and here, here's the perspective is like, they know that this is not going to get any better, yep. right? They know that this is the, the price of houses are not going to go anywhere. They may fluctuate a little bit, but in, in the grand scheme of things, you're not going to have this huge slide like everyone's talking about. So, you know, Juan's going to pull up the, the numbers here, but I think that's really important to note when everybody's saying, Hey, something's going to happen over here. And you got guys that, you know, are buying up single family homes and multifamily on the right, when interest rates are at an all-time high, watch watch that, right? Keep a close eye on that. So I just, I wanted to pull this up and get perspective really quick on this, on this mortgage, you know, and y'all bear with us. Like we're sharing the truth here, right? Like, um, the, not, the point is not to, to, to paint it all as in sunshine, lollipops and rainbows. It's not like mortgage payments are very, very difficult right now. Affordability is an issue, but guess what? There are people who make this type of income and they're not bothered by this. Does it? Do they wish it was less? Of course, especially after seeing 3% interest rates. But this is the new normal. Get used to it. Suck it up, buttercup. This is what we have to deal with. And I and I know that's strong language, but like we can't sit here and tell you that interest rates are going to go back down to fours. We may never see those ever again in our lifetime. You can't bank on that. 
right? But this has been this has been the current reality for quite some time, and I just wanted to get into this. So we were talking about the income that it took to do this in 1980 versus today. Y'all look at these mortgage payments on the 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 median. Again, we talked about the difference between median and average. A four hundred and forty five thousand dollar home with a 10 10 down payment, which is forty four thousand five hundred dollars. Again, Eric said it earlier. You used to be able to make thirty thousand dollars buy a fifty thousand dollar home and only put down ten thousand dollars in total. And your mortgage payment would be like seven hundred dollars. <laughs> okay, now that same to buy another three bedroom, two bath, it costs four hundred and forty five thousand dollars. And the mortgage payment, approximately, when you add taxes and mortgage insurance and uh, homeowners insurance into it, is roughly thirty four hundred dollars today. These things are one is not like the other. So when you hear this, this is what they're talking about. OK, and that's why. So that's why bringing up that Fed rate hike is important. The Federal Reserve does not control interest rates on mortgages. But trust me, they are closely aligned. If you look at the charts, they look almost identical. OK, so that is something I, I wanted to, to, to discuss and definitely get into the details on there. All right. Um, but let's talk quickly about what's happening locally. Right. Now we've gotten into some of the stuff that we don't necessarily love. Here's the the the, the median U.S. Uh, house price on single family homes. We've been talking about Ann Arbor a lot today, so let's get into Ann Arbor specifically. And for those of you that don't know, this is Redfin. You can go check out their data at any sort. I like using this with, when we do our lives because you know that we're sharing public information that you can go out and get from any trusted source, right? We can show you the MLS stuff, but I always want people to know that like we're bringing this to you public um, now. Hey, let us know where you're watching from. Let us know what your interest rate on your on your mortgage is. This is a question I love to ask people right now because some people are like, I got a 2.35 and you're like, don't ever sell. Don't ever sell it. Rent it. Do whatever you got to do to keep that house in your, in your family because that is an incredible mortgage rate. When you amortize that over time, you're going to be actually paying negative interest. We don't need to go down that rabbit hole. Forgive me for going down there. Um, but that's a whole other conversation. So the, the median home price in Ann Arbor currently. It, Ann Arbor's up year over year, 13.4%. For, so for everybody here in gloom and doom and the housing market is terrible, Ann Arbor is not playing that game. They're like, y'all go do you, boo. We're over here up 13.4% for the year. Okay, now that's all home types. That's going to be condos, townhomes, single family homes. But let's get into single family homes specifically and what's happened over there. The median sales price is 571000 So now if I take back over to that calculator, what do you think the mortgage payment is going to be on a 571? It's going to be over $4,000 a month. Wrap your mind around that. <laughs> Most people can't. It's ridiculous, right? Yeah. Look at, look at that jump. Look at that jump from, what is that, May, February? Yeah. Well, you weren't when selling. It was down to like four, the 400. Yes, we talked about this because it's fascinating to see that in the peak peak last month in June there. Um, you can see the, the, the bump. And you're always going to get a little bit of wave here. One of the things I love to do on these charts, Eric, is go back and look because everybody's like, well, what does it normally look like, right? right? What is the normal market? So I always love to go back at least five years because 2019, um, we didn't have all crazy town. Yeah, pre-pandemic. Right? Pre yep. And you look at these home prices where they were back then and look at where they are now. It's just, it's, it's amazing when you see that. Uh, so that's what's happening in, in Ann Arbor. Love this, um, to see that activity. We can go deeper on that, but let's uh, look around the area. Let's talk about Royal Oak. Um, where are you hiding? Sometimes you got to dig deeper. There we go. I don't want downtown. There we go. Let's talk about Royal Oak. So the median um, home price in Royal Oak, Michigan right now is 335000 That's up 3.1%. Let's talk about single family because that's usually what people are buying out there. Not a ton of condos and townhouses, but they do sell them out in that area there, up 1.2%. That seems really low to me, Eric. Um, you know, I'm always intrigued when I see stuff like that. And Royal Oak Township versus Royal, the city of Royal Oak. We get into this when we go into Brighton. As you all know, when you live in Michigan, you've got these cities and townships. The cities could be, you know, 1,200 people proper. And then there's 5,000 people in the subordinate community around it. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at that um, as well. Um, one of the other areas that we, you know, um, when we look at the overall um, market here, and we talked about Plymouth Canton earlier, right? So I'll just bring up Canton, Michigan. Um, as an example, we got Westland on here. 
Sometimes it pulls data from both. Yeah, I don't want to use that. Looked at Novi the other day. Um, just big, big numbers out there. It's Plymouth, Michigan. Plymouth, Michigan is um, down 9.87% on all single family homes. And this is, again, if you're not looking for a condo or a townhouse, then that number doesn't matter. What matters is this number. So the median single family home in Plymouth, Michigan is up 13%, very similar to Ann Arbor. Um, these, it, and you'll notice a theme here. These, these towns, right, with, that have uh, a lot of walkability, have a lot of uh, entertainment and um, access, they are, they are some of the most desirable areas. Would you, would you guys agree? hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Yes. It is like Northville, Plymouth, uh, Ann Arbor, Dexter, Chelsea, yep. Brighton, Milford. Yeah. Great school Great. districts always demand really good, uh, or retain their tend to re, uh, retain the real estate values highly. Um, so school districts, you know, we look, uh, if we looked at Novi as an example or Northville, these other areas, um, that we can focus on. They all tend to look very similar when we start talking about single family homes. Uh, here we go. Single family homes in North. Um, this is Novi. 625 is now the new median out there. Um, and, you know, up 1% a year over year. So June, July was the peak last year in Michigan and the United States. And as you can see, we're right back to those peak levels. When people told you for a year, that the housing market was going to crash. It has been one year since people were wailing about how the housing market was going to be an absolute dumpster fire. Technically, that went back 15 months um, in October of 22 when they started raising interest rates. Right? December, I think, technically. Uh, even if you go back to August of 2020, yep. right, when things really started to, to take off, you're like, oh, this, this is crazy. I'm not buying a house. Prices are are too inflated. Yep. Right. And that's fine. Right. That that's something new is is always hard to kind of grasp. Like, oh, this is this must be a flash in the pan. Let's let all this COVID stuff, you know, die down and then it'll get back to normal. Yep. It just it just never did. Yeah. And, and guys, we're not here to tell and I am going to be the first one to sit here and tell you housing prices will fall at some point. By what amount? I don't know. Neither do you. Neither does the quote unquote expert. Right now, the experts, Merrill, uh, um, not Merrill Lynch, um, Morgan Stanley, one of the big banks just came out and said that they expect a uh, five to eight percent, I'm sorry, six to eight percent appreciation over the next three years on, on, on housing. Are they right? We don't know. Right. Is this sustainable? No. <laughs> the one thing I can absolutely tell you is this is not sustainable. However, is it going to go down 1%? Is it going to go down 3%? Right? That is it going to go down 5? We don't no one has that answer y'all. But here here's what I know. If interest rates go down, okay? And I'm I'm going to leave this here. I'm not going to go deep deep in the charts because I don't think that's necessary. Here's the thing you can count on. If the Federal Reserve who said today that it looks like that they're going to pause on on increasing interest rates potentially for the remainder of the year. Again, things can change, but let's just say they don't raise interest rates again for, for the remainder of the year. And they start making adjustments on interest rates, lowering them next year. All of the demand that's been sitting on the sideline, right, that either couldn't afford it because of the 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 uh, the um, cost of, of money, right, meaning the, the interest rates being as high as they were, or the ones who believed it was going to crash, if they start reversing on those interest rates, what do you think is going to happen to all that demand? This just been sitting there that people who both had to move and believed that they were right. I'm telling you right now, you think 2021 was a competitive real estate market? If we see four and a half percent interest rates, God bless y'all. Because these houses, it's going to be Canada. All right. And if you don't know about Canadian real estate, go check out Toronto. You can get a um, a shed, and I and I say that lightly, a shed, uh, <laughs> for about one point six million. Okay, and I mean a shed, y'all, something that most of us would want to burn to the ground and rebuild. It is crazy. And last time I checked, their money's worth less than ours, right? Their their real estate prices have doubled in the last ten years. 
lots of factors that go into that. But the thing that I just want to, to, to make note of, and thank you for spending so much time with us tonight. Um, and I promise we'll be more succinct in the future, but Hey, it's our first attempt here, right? This is our first live. Y'all did Sophia do a good job? <laughs> All right. Let her know. Again, she was super nervous. Let her know in the comments that she did a great job because she did. Um, and she will deliver more value in the future. I promise you that. Um, let Eric know that he did an incredible job. At, more importantly, go follow them on the social channels, right? I'm here to be the uh, the, the dancing bear with the, the red nose. I'm good with that, right? That's my role in today <laughs> today's live. Um, but I'm also a numbers nerd. I love talking this stuff, y'all. Here's the one thing that I'll guarantee you. I will bring you comprehensive data where you can really kind of look through the numbers and make an educated decision for yourself. And ultimately, that's what I know that Eric and Sophia want for you and our audience as well. And for our real estate clients, I am blessed to be able to be a partner here at the True Living Group. I spent, you know, nine years of my real estate career serving Metro Detroit. I am grateful for it. I've served hundreds of clients there and we continue to do that. Um, I do that from a distance at this point, but I'm grateful for it. And one thing that we know is um, Detroiters are resilient no matter what comes our way um, in Southeastern Michigan, this is us as a whole, right? We're all in it together, whether we're talking about Ann Arbor or, or Royal Oak or St. Clair Shores. Listen, y'all, our economy goes together, right? We're all tied in, you know, and, and the one thing that I know about Southeastern Michigan and that mentality in, in most of Michigan is we're, we're a very resilient bunch. So no matter what comes our way, we figure it out. Uh, but we're going to deliver you value locally. So, you know, what's happening in your marketplace, um, you know, things to do, uh, things to watch out for. And we are definitely going to deliver on the real estate side so you can make educated decision about what is best for you. If you're considering moving to the area, let's say you're coming in for a job at the U, um, know that we've got your back there. All of the contact information for our team is listed down below. Eric and Sophia would love to have a conversation on how to best serve you. Um, the thing that I would love to wrap up with here, y'all, any final thoughts? Um, and of course, we're going to go ladies first, as always. Sophia, thank you for your time. Uh, any last thoughts? for the audience tonight um no but i did want to say like how blessed i am to have both you and eric as my team leads and you juan when you say you're a numbers nerd like that's what i try to eat up most from you so that's like where i'm he's he's number one for me for when i'm i'm trying to you know better myself as far as the numbers go so I, I like that you're on here today sharing that with us. And of course, Eric is always very knowledgeable. So I'm blessed to have you both as my team leads. And um, I was nervous. I'm sure you guys can tell. But um, the less nervous I get, the more I will feel comfortable delivering my value on the channel. So it's awesome. We're having a conversation and they get to be invited in and be a fly on the wall. So I, I love that. Thank you for um, what you brought to the table and your preparation. We appreciate that. Eric, any final words for your audience? Yeah, no, thank you, Sophia. Um, no, this has been fun. I mean, the point of these lives is obviously to bring you guys value. So, you know, if you guys have questions, let us know. You know, we want to be the most valuable resource you have when making that move here to Michigan, whether it's real estate or looking at things to do. Um, you know, job relocations tend to be those conversations where, hey, we want to be close to work, but maybe that lifestyle where the office is, is not the appropriate lifestyle of what you're looking for. And that's the cool thing about Southeast Michigan is, you know, there's tons of different, if you're looking for city life, got it. If you're looking for a nightlife, you got it. If you're looking for a little bit more acreage, maybe um, a lake life, like you name it, you can achieve it here. You just got to be on the top of your game because those different lifestyles are all going to spread across different markets here in Metro Detroit. So I just want to thank everyone for tuning in today. You know, we're going to do more of these and going to continue to keep making content that brings you guys value. So thanks for tuning in. Absolutely. And thanks for the invite, guys. I'm um, always honored to serve my hometown. Um, it's funny. I was just up last week as I was telling telling you guys, I spent the week with Eric. We went out and filmed Celine. So the Celine video will drop on Saturday. Um, and no cameos for me. I was just his cameraman. I got to hang out and, and really just, um, you know, enjoy the time together. And it's always fun to be back home. You know, the one thing I'll say is like, we, we, we love Michigan, right? And again, there's some of the most resilient people on this planet. Um, and the irony is, uh, living down in Tampa now where I'm surrounded by people that are from Michigan. <laughs> so in like, Canada, it's like, it's just, it's Michigan part two is really what's going on down here, which makes me laugh. Um, but I still get to come home and I still get to serve clients. I went and looked at 
you know, property while I was up there, we're working with clients, you know, even though we're not back home, you guys are our hands and feet, so to speak. And more importantly, you do a better job. The reason that we decided to, to do this partnership is because Eric does an excellent job of leading the team and serving clients. And Sophia stepped right in and, and listen, we're not perfect, but the one thing we love is real estate. We don't have to do this y'all. We get to do this. And there's a different mentality with that. We love real estate. We love everything about it. We obsess about it. We love serving clients and making their dreams a reality. So, um, you know, if you're looking to buy, sell, relocate or invest here in Southeastern Michigan, do not hesitate to reach out to us and the team. All of our contact is listed down below. Um, information is listed down below. And uh, we will see you all next Wednesday for the next Michigan uh, Living in Michigan Live. And we're so excited to see you guys there. Leave us a comment. Leave us a question down below. We'll make sure we get back to those. And until next time, go out and have a wonderful evening. We'll see you.